Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. 101 Solve Mechanical Engineering Problems, HVAC 9. 8,000 CFM of 80 degree dry bulb, 50% relative humidity air at 14.7 PSI are cooled to a saturated 57 degree condition in an air washer. 42 degree chilled water for the spray is produced by an R12 refrigeration system. The chilled water is heated to 55 degrees by the warm air before it is returned to the refrigerator. A. How much moisture in pounds per hour is removed from or added to the air in the washer. B. What is the tonnage of the refrigeration effect? And C. What is the flow rate in GPM of the chilled water? So I've drawn a picture on the right of the air washer, which is basically a spray, and then there's some air moving through this chamber. And as the air moves through the chamber, since it's cold water, it cools the air. So it goes from 80 degrees down to 57 degrees. And we know the volume of air that's moving through, and we also know the relative humidity of the air before it goes through the air washer. So I'm calling the input air state 1, and then the air coming out state 2. We also know that state 2 is saturated, which is an important fact. That means that the relative humidity is 100%. So we know enough about the air going in and the air coming out to plot both of those points on the psychrometric chart. So both states are fully defined. But it's not obvious exactly what's going on. We know the temperature of the air is being reduced, so it seems like it's cooling. But then we notice that the humidity is increasing. It's going from 50% to 100%, but that's on a relative humidity basis, so it could actually be decreasing on an absolute humidity basis. It's hard to say. So the best thing to do would be to actually plot it on the psych chart, which I did, and I'll invite you to do the same, but I'll just kind of draw a simplified version of what I'm seeing on the psych chart. So state one is somewhere about here, 80 degrees and 50% humidity, and state two is somewhere around here, all the way up against the saturation curve, but it is actually just a bit lower than state one. So if we take both points all the way over to the right axis where we would find the humidity ratio, this is state one and this is state two, we will find that the humidity ratio at state one is greater than the humidity ratio at state two. So even though the relative humidity is increasing, the humidity ratio is lower at state two. So the air is actually being dehumidified by using cold water. You could imagine a case where this water wasn't quite as cold. It would still be colder than the air and it would do sensible cooling, but it could do latent heating. So this arrow could be to the left and slightly up on a diagonal if it were warmer water. But since it's very cold water, it ends up doing so much sensible cooling that the air has no choice but to ride down that saturation curve to some location where the humidity ratio is even lower. And that was not obvious. There was nothing about the problem statement that made that necessarily the case, but they gave us enough information to fully define both states and we were able to figure it out by drawing it. And then just to kind of finish the point, we can come down to the horizontal axis to pick up those dry bulb temperatures, which we already know, but we can just note them for completeness. We know this is T1, which is 80 degrees, and T2, which is 57 degrees dry bulb. And then along this axis, up on the diagonal, we have the enthalpies. So this would be H2, and this would be H1. And we note that H1 is greater than H2. So let's just make some observations about this here on the left. We noted that T2 is less than T1 for the air, so the air is being cooled sensibly, which is consistent with our drawing. We note that the humidity ratio of 2 is less than the humidity ratio of 1, so the air is being dried, so that's latent cooling that's happening to the air. And then the net effect of that is that H2 is less than H1, which is basically saying that energy is being removed from the air. And that's happening in both the sensible and the latent sense. And this is the combined effect of that. So all of that is just to kind of get our arms around the problem. Now we're ready to kind of set up for answering their questions. The first question is, 
how much moisture is removed from or added to. They left it open for us. It's definitely going to turn out that moisture is being removed. We already know that. But now how do we quantify how much is being removed in the air washer? Well, that's going to depend upon the difference between the humidity ratios. So let's look up the humidity ratios before we start to look at that formula. We'll find the humidity ratio of states 1 and 2 from the psych chart. Those are 76.4 grains per pound and 69.3 grains per pound. Not a huge difference. And then for part B, when we find the refrigeration effect, that's going to be the combined sensible and latent. So that's going to depend on the difference between the enthalpies. So let's grab those enthalpies H1 and H2 as well. H1 is 31.18 BTUs per pound and H2 is 24.43. And the other thing we're going to need is for the mass flow rate of air, we have a volume flow rate. We're going to want to turn that into a mass flow rate. So we should grab the specific volume as well for state one. Little V1 is 13.84 cubic feet per pound. All right, so now that we have most of the numbers that we need, let's go after some of these answers. And we'll start with the moisture removal. So the formula we want to use here is that the mass flow rate of water is equal to the mass flow rate of air times the difference in the humidity ratio going in and going out. So state one minus the humidity ratio at state two, where the mass flow rate is simply the volume flow rate, which we know, divided by the specific volume, which we just looked up. So this is all for state one. If we thought the volumes of state one and state two going in and out had to be the same, we might consider looking up the specific volumes for each. But in this case, it seems like the volume going in could change is a certain amount of mass of air that's going in and it's the mass volume flow rate that's going to be conserved through the air washer as opposed to the volume like you would have in a building where you had some supply and extract you need that volume to be balanced here it's the mass that remains balanced so let's go right ahead and make these substitutions the volume flow rate is 8000 cfm which i'll write as feet cubed per minute so we can see the units cancel and we'll need to multiply by 60 minutes per hour because we're going to want the final answer to be in pounds of water per hour. And then we divide by the specific volume, 13.84 cubic feet per pound. Already we can see minutes go away and cubic feet go away. And now the difference between those two humidity ratios, 76.4 grains per pound minus 69.3 grains per pound. And now we want the final answer in pounds, not grains. So we have to multiply by one pound of water vapor divided by 7,000 grains. And this is a pound of H2O. Whereas this denominator is pounds of dry air. So this pounds of dry air cancels with this pounds of dry air. And then grains will cancel with this grains. And we will end up with pounds of water vapor divided by hours. And that's what we ultimately want. And when we plug that in, we get 35.2 pounds of water per hour. And that's the answer to A.